Welcome to Video Hell Show. I'm Frank. Today we're going to talk about Trust Me. Uh, I can't really remember a lot about it. It was a very forgettable film. So uh, first I'm going to read a little bit, of course, off the back for you and see what they have to say. Trust me. Romance and politics don't mix. So sweet, trusting Alex Lauren, played by uh, Teresa Tinling, <laughs> finds out when she discovers a revealing video of her boyfriend, Senator Arlen Kane, in bed with another woman. Alex grabs the incriminating video and hits the road with a young man, uh, played by Adrian Lauderette, only to realize that the desperate senator has sent a brutal henchman in deadly pursuit. Throw in a beautiful TV newswoman, <laughs> a backwoods phone sex room, <laughs> and a small town foot fetishist, and you have one crazy adventure racing out of control across the Wild West. I guess that describes the movie. This was put out by uh, Leo Films, presents a Jeff Probst film uh, starring Therese Tinling. I think I might have said Teresa earlier, uh, or maybe it's Therese. Therese? I'm going to say Therese. Therese Tinling, uh, Bob Morrissey, Bill Salyers, Adrian Lauderette, Javon Hull, and uh, Cindy Shavir. So, uh, this was distributed by Artwork and Design of Leo Home Video. Le uh, artwork and Design by Leo Home Video, uh, 2207 Productions. This was made in 1995, or at least put to VHS in 1995. Um, show a little bit of the back of the box here for a second. I know uh, a couple of my viewers specifically like to make sure that I show the back of the box. Uh, so, there you have it. Doesn't really show a heck of a lot. We've got uh, a, a woman scantily clad, and I believe that's the news reporter that they were talking about. Uh, in a bra, and then we have uh, some people talking. Not, not, not all that exciting. Uh, what do you think, Nick? So we meet our main character, and one of the very first scenes she's in, she goes to a restaurant. So it wasn't really real. I mean, love doesn't go away, so you didn't really love him. No, I was in love with him for a period of time. Okay. Uh, where it kind of is a little reminiscent of Dumb and Dumber, uh, where Harry and Lloyd go and grab a burger and have to mess with uh, sea bass. Mm, mm, mm. Who's she? Just passing through. Leave her alone, Elton. Mm. Uh, but instead, this woman gets sexually harassed by a redneck gentleman who asks to see her breasts. So you give me a little look, them titties. Hey! <laughs> I don't want to touch them or nothing. I just want to look at them. Uh, that's how we kick this movie off, pretty much. Uh, I can't remember what may have come first. Like again, like I said, I'm just going to talk about the things that that stuck out the most because I can't remember this piece of shit movie even just a little. I can remember a little bit. It is so bad. This movie's bad. I'm going to go ahead and just get that right out of the way. But so the very first thing is a dirty redneck in a restaurant sexually harasses our main character. Off to a great start. So right after that, our main character, I guess she appears here, I think that might be her, but that, I'm going to be honest, I don't think that looks like her in the movie. So then our main character, uh, I guess, decides to spin it back on Dirty Redneck and asks to see his dick. You want to see my titties? I want to see your dick. Well, I got a back seat outside. No, 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 right here, right now. Come on, whip it out. Do it, Elton. I'd like to see them. Shut up, Percy. Come on, show me what you got. I ain't showing you shit. Which is fucking crazy, I guess. I mean, you're getting sexually harassed. I think the last thing you want to do is egg on the dude. But, I, I mean, I guess she's badass, and uh, she proves herself to be somewhat badass throughout the film, if I can remember correctly. Yeah, so she asks to see his dick. He gets fucking mad aggro when she asks to see his dick. That's what I thought. You got a real smart mouth, little girl. That's enough, Elton. Or, yeah, as soon as she asks to see his dick, this dude flips the fuck out. He gets really hostile and violent, even though, like, I would guess that would have been a part of what he wanted to happen when he started sexually harassing her. I don't know, man. This is fucking ridiculous already. This movie's terrible. So it's important to realize that this happens within the first ten minutes of the movie. It's not even it's not even ten minutes in, and this is the kind of crap we're introduced to. So I guess that really sets the tone for how insane this movie's gonna get. So then the waitress comes over and says, Honey, don't worry about it. That guy don't mean nothing by it. He don't mean nothing by it. Cash only, please. Okay. I should have popped him. So I guess she's in there defending this fucking monster all the time who's in there sexually harassing the customers. And she's like, oh, he doesn't mean anything by those insane remarks he just made. Uh, and then it says cash only. Make sure that she puts up that it's cash only. She wants to make sure they're not paying a credit card fee uh, in this 
at this restaurant. I bet they have a lot of sexual harassment claims. So they got to make sure they, they scrimp every buck they can. They cash only system here. <laughs> they got to defend the business. So at this point, you're sympathizing with the main character quite a bit because a lot of crazy shit is happening to her just now. But then, after they're told that it's cash only, her, or she dines and dashes, her and I think her companion dine and dash on the fucking check. We gotta go. What? Work with me on this. You know, I think I left my purse in the car. I'll go get it. Boy, I really hit the spot. You all have a uh, restroom? Uh-huh, down the hall. Thanks. Boy, that was a great grilled cheese. Is that uh, is a special cheese? Or... Like, we're supposed to sympathize with these people, then, but then immediately after this happens, and I do sympathize, because what just happened to her is fucking crazy, but that doesn't give her the excuse to then dine and dash on the meal. Okay. They just fucking jet! Like, that's the biggest asshole move in the world! Uh, I guess they didn't have any cash. So around the 15 minute mark, we get some clunky dialogue with the senator talking to his hired hitman to go kill Alex. I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking the same thing myself about what happened last time. Hey, it was totally out of control. It was way out of line. But I'm completely off sugar now and I haven't watched TV in over a month. And if you just give me one more chance, I swear to God, I will get the job done 100% bottom line. I'm going to deliver. So I think at this point, Alex gets a ride from the, uh, the, the guy that she's with this whole time. I can't remember his, whose name. Uh, we'll call him Car Dude. So Alex gets a ride from Car Dude, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And they go to a motel and check in. We're gonna have to get more money. But out of nowhere, um, sexual harasser Redneck shows up. I'm back. Hands up, cowboy. If he moves, <laughs> So... <laughs> <laughs> hey Nick, can you believe this shit was going on in this piece of fucking garbage movie? Sexual harassment, Redneck shows up and uh, Alex and shoots this dude along with the buddy car guy. You broke my stick! You broke your fucking stick! Now I'm gonna break your fucking head. <laughs> they both take a gun, kind of, and shoot sexual harassment redneck right in the chest. Broke your fucking stick! Broke your fucking stick! Broke your fucking stick! <laughs> Which I guess he deserved, but I mean... Holy shit. And that's where we get the kickoff to her running away. By the way, Car Guy is also supposed to be an assassin, we find out. I don't exactly know who he was working for or why they find this out. You gotta track him down, scope it out, then you get in and you get out quickly without anybody seeing you. It's, that's the key to a good hit. You're a hitman? I prefer a hired guy. But he's supposed to be some sort of assassin, but I don't think he ever actually killed anybody. So once a uh, car dude assassin and uh, Alex kill this guy, they run away. Alex, I'm gonna throw up! Just hold on a second, I'm gonna pull over right up here. Oh, man. Oh God, I don't want to go to jail. Shut up, Jeremy. I don't want to go to jail, Alex. He's dead. I know. I was there. Decide to sleep in the truck overnight, but then say they're going to go back to town in the morning? There's nothing we can do tonight. We sleep here and we go to town in the morning. Maybe they'll be looking for us. I don't have a better idea. Which honestly doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why they want to go back at all. They should probably get the fuck out of there and go literally anywhere else. But they decide to go back to town. So, uh, the car's like broken down or something and they have to go, or for some reason, uh, car guy assassin has to make sure that he goes to town separately, so he hitches a ride, he goes to, to hitch a ride. Thanks a lot, I thought I was gonna die out there. Next town would be great. That's where I live. The next town. <laughs> Works out for both of us. And this woman, I think her name is like Renee, or Renee McAllister or something like that. My name's Renette. Renette McAllister. Hey, Renette, I'm uh, Chet Duncan. Uh... This woman uh, comes and picks him up, which I guess he finds out very quickly was a really bad idea because she's an insane foot fetish lady. You can take your shoes off if you like. I'm fine. It's gonna be a while. I've got mine off. Socks too. 
uh, who puts a gun to his head. Take your shoes off. Please. Okay, okay. Um, let's get those off for you. Well, you know, that would probably feel real good. <laughs> oh, boy. No socks, too. So, okay. Um, yeah. Woo! Hey, lift him up. What are you gonna do? Oh, uh, let me look under the toenail. Uh, Wait, just, oh, good. Nick, can you. Would you be able to elaborate on why the fuck this would happen in a movie? Touch me! What do you mean, touch you? Run my leg with your foot! And this movie, any movie? Uh, oh, God, that one. Faster! Alright, faster. okay, okay! Oh, oh, that's it! Oh, come on, Tony, stop! Oh, oh. Who doesn't want to talk about it? I don't think I want to talk about it too much either, because it it's insane. It makes this shit is bonkers. It's absolutely it's ab this stuff is is blanana a bing bong. I don't know. Uh foot fetishist gun pulls the gun on this guy and he dips. Ah! Whoa! Whoa! He just dips. I think he dips out the car. I think he just dips set and jumps the fuck out. Uh so that that's a thing that happens in this movie. Uh Apropos of nothing. So I don't know what the hell's going on in this movie at this point, but Alex is coming through some murder scene photos for some reason, like she's some sort of cop. I guess this is, I don't, I don't remember where the hell she got them or why she had them, but she had some murder scene photos and she was looking through them. So this old lady eventually comes along and picks up Alex, takes her on the ride to town. Meanwhile, assassin guy who just got done of a surviving foot fetishist finds a garage full of, again, what looked like a lot of, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say rednecks. Anyway. Yeah. Morning. Good morning. Morning. Hi there. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. What can we do for you? Hi, uh, I need to find some water. I have a leaky radiator. And they offer him a latte out of their extremely expensive latte machine. Why don't you? Have yourself a latte there while you wait. It's self-serve. Oh, uh, no thanks. The uh, water'd be great. All right, uh... This movie has so many weird fucking choices, I can't even begin to describe it or, or explain it. It just... It's just a bunch of random shit cobbled together into something that's supposed to be a cohesive movie or a narrative or something. But it's just a bunch of scenes, and this is one of them. So the cops are on the lookout for assassin car guy and Alex, and I guess one of the truckers somehow recognizes uh, assassin guy somehow, because I don't even know there's an APB, I don't know if they established that or not, but assassin guy gets noticed a little bit by one of the rednecks who puts out a call on a CB radio to follow these, uh, these two. Hound dog, this is Latte. Yes, hound dog. Yeah. You there? Yeah, what? Well, you remember that uh, young couple that they was looking for a little while back? Yeah. What'd that fellow look like? Because that always, that was a real trope from the 80s that everybody had a CB on the highway and they all, maybe they did. I don't know. I don't remember that. I was too young, I guess. But uh, maybe everybody had a CB and that's, this, I mean, at least rednecks do. And they sold them out. So so at this point, the newswoman is with them. We got company. Who? That chick, Geraldo. She's out there. What? Oh, Somehow she appears in the back of Alex's truck at one point and is like, oh, we're going to cut an exclusive TV deal for your story and it'll, I'll get you off, she basically says. Hi, guys. Uh, get back. Oh, get back. Easy, easy. I'm on television. So I noticed. What the hell are you doing in my truck? Well, I didn't want to lose you. I've been looking for you both all day. Am I going to jail? I have no idea. Here, have my card. How did you find us? Well, they're looking for your truck. I want an exclusive. You're not getting a story, ladies. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about killing you, too. I'll make sure that, I, that you don't get charged or some shit. She'll get a reduced sentence. I don't know what she's trying to say that she's going to get, but she says that if you cut an exclusive TV deal with me about your story, I'll somehow make this better for you. You're not killers. Eldon Smith was a dick. <laughs> that's not what you said. Well, that's TV. So Alex calls the senator for some reason, and nothing happens because of this. Alex? Did you turn some reporter on to me? What? No, no, where are you? You got a lot of balls. Except at a, it just pisses them both off and nothing comes of it at all. And then, somehow the reporter keeps finding out, this newswoman keeps finding out where Alex and Assassin Guy are. Hungry? No thanks, I have everything I need. Ah. I don't know how she keeps doing it, but she is like there at every turn. Meanwhile, the cops everywhere are fucking looking for him and nobody can find them, but this news reporter finds them instantly! It makes no fucking sense! 
There's a great weirdo guy in a car monologue that happens around uh, 33 minutes. Let me explain something to you. Unlike you, I have an image to maintain. You do anything to tarnish that image, I'm fucked. But if I'm fucked, you're fucked. Because I'm Briggs, and that means I can kick your ass anytime I want. You got that, Alex? You got that? You got the tape. You know, I wonder what's on that tape. So at one point, at one point they're sitting by the side of the road, and reporter lady just starts cracking off road flares for some reason. What is she doing? Peg, what are you doing? I don't want to get hit. You know, we really don't need the attention right now. Well, good. <sighs> Let's get a room. And I don't know where the hell she got that many road flares. She has like a, uh, a highway safety level amount of road flares in her car. <laughs> that shit, again, nothing about this movie makes any sense. We get like a dream sequence with uh, Assassin, dude. Psst, Jeremy. Can you give me a hand? A little deeper. Hey, I got something to say. How you doing, pal? <laughs> Damn, don't I get a box or something? This movie makes so many choices that no one should ever make. So if you're gonna make a movie, watch this movie to find out how you should never make one for sure. At around 37 minutes, we get one of the most clever pieces, the only clever piece of sound editing in the entire movie, where they turn a digging shovel into a bike pump sound. That was cool. That was the only cool thing I can really think of so far. So there's that. This movie has a lot of boring stretches where absolutely nothing at all happens. So at one point, reporter woman FedExes a news report to her office. I guess you could fax it. I, she overnights a news report. How the fuck is it going to get there? She FedExes a news report. I guess that used to happen. It would get there so much later. How is it going to actually get there on time? You're going to tell me it was going to really get there when they needed it? Like, these are time-sensitive things. You couldn't just dictate it over the phone. Or you couldn't, like, fax it. Like, there had to be a fax machine somewhere. It was fucking madness. So the assassin guy was supposed to prove to the person he was murdering on behalf of that he had killed the person by getting a finger. He had a finger. He loses it. And then he's starting to freak out because he can't find a finger. He doesn't have an extra finger. The newswoman somehow just goes, oh, I'll get you one. Hi, guys, what's up? I lost my finger. Oh! It was in a box and a bag and a stump at the restaurant. Did you see it? No. I'm dead. Wait a minute, you need a finger? I can get a finger. You can get a finger? I can get a finger, man or woman. Man, and it's gotta be fresh. Okay, I understand that you'll owe me. Well, I'll give you a cut. I don't want a cut. I'll get you a finger. Like, what, what the fuck? Excuse me, what? Excuse me, what the fuck? You're gonna get me a finger? Why? How? Why? When? Like, this woman is a reporter. How does she just have access to corpse parts? What the fuck is this movie talking about? I got you. I got you. Want that fucking finger? I got you on a finger. I got got any finger you need. I got all these fingers. You want fingers? You need you need an extra finger? She got you, bro. So then the newswoman tries to seduce the assassin guy for uh, out of nowhere for no reason. Hi, you feel better? Oh uh, yeah, thanks. Do you like the candles? I thought it might help you relax. You have been through so much. You must be just exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Busts her shirt open. I think that was on the back. That was that scene on the back here. And she goes, what do you think of my breasts? Wow. What? You have a great body. Thanks. What do you think about mine? It, it's nice. What about my breasts? They're good. Oh, you can say it. They're too small, aren't they? I, I admire her insanely subtle approach. I'm glad though she, I'm glad the actress didn't have to go full shirtless. Because that would have been really sad. This movie, no one should have been nude in this terrible, terrible piece of shit. Trust me on that. What's it like to watch somebody die? What's it like to watch somebody die? What? Tell me about it. Tell me everything. It's not fun. I could get you a lot of money for the right no, story. No, I don't want to talk about does it, it anymore. Does it make you crazy? No, it doesn't make me crazy, all right? We killed somebody and I'm not proud of it. Fucking Tom Cruise! I'm talking network! Peg, oh. shut up! So we're in a pool hall and two pool hustlers show up and they decide to play a two-on-two -two with uh, the news reporter 
and uh, Alex. Wow, what a great place! Play? Yeah, some. Great, we can break. Where? Here? Evening, ladies. Hi. Oh, that will be a little two on two. Get lost. <laughs> oh, come on, it'll be fun. <laughs> And uh, it seems like they're going to try to pool hustle these ladies. But in actuality, the ladies end up pool hustling these guys. Eight ball corner pocket. Well, that was fun. What else can we play? You hustled us. And it was a pleasure. Bullshit. Face it, you suck. Shut up, bitch. Hey, relax. Shut up. Shut your fucking time. So this pool hustle they got going on gets a fight started and gets Jeremy slapped the fuck out. Uh, at some point, the reporter is talking to a cop who questions her and calls her Katie Couric. Excuse me. One of you here, Katie Couric? Oh, that's me. Which I guess is a Katie Couric slam. A cop finds a gun on Alex. Maybe the, I think it's the gun. A cop finds a gun on Alex and decides to take them in. Uh-huh. And I don't suppose you have a permit for this. It's mine. And no, I don't. Uh, I'm gonna have to ask both of you to get into the patrol vehicle. Officer, Lady, I think we need... cease and desist. I think... Please! So, uh, Jeremy and Alex now are getting detained by the police, and they're being brought to jail. We come to find out the jail is a fucking chicken coop. This is your jail? No, this is a chicken coop. Old jail burned down a couple years ago. Well, aren't you gonna build another one? The mayor doesn't think we need one. You can't keep us in a chicken coop. We'll talk to the mayor. A chicken coop. Because the uh, they don't have enough money to have a real jail or some shit happens. I hate this fucking movie so much. I hate it. So a reporter lady goes to talk to the jailers, decides that she's going to lie on their behalf, and tells the cops that they are undercover working on a story. So, uh, why are you here? Well, I'm on a story, a big story. You see, the two people in there, they are undercover. We are this close to making a major bust right here in your little city. And because of that deputy, we are this close to having our cover blown. And that uh, they should be set free, which these cops just fucking buy. Hook, line, and sinker. Like, they don't question it. They don't say anything. Okay, okay, I guess they're here for, I guess, I guess they're here for you to do that thing you talk about and get them undercover, but I don't know, well fuck it, uh, we'll let them out. So they go to let these, the uh, Alex and Jeremy out, but for some reason the reporter says, don't let them out till tomorrow. Well, what are you waiting on? Get in there and let them go. Well, this may sound kind of odd, but why don't we keep them there tonight, you know, just to make it look real? What do you think, Sheriff? I think you're right. In fact, I wouldn't even let them know you know. Just keep them there tonight, and in the morning we'll release them. That's a good idea. And I can't remember why they said that. I don't even think there's a reason. She just says, let them out tomorrow. And the cops were like, okay, ma'am, you say so, go ahead and let them out tomorrow. And they go ahead and let the people out the next day. That was that, no stakes. The sheriff then tries to offer the reporter woman some beef jerky. Good night. Uh, ma'am, uh, I was wondering if uh, maybe later on, if you're free, I could, uh, you know, buy you a beer or a pretzel or beef jerky or... <laughs> well, um... Instead of going on like a normal date or something, or, or being like, hey, you want to grab some coffee? You want to grab a dinner? Sheriff is smooth moves it into the reporter lady. He's like, you want some beef jerky, ma'am? What the fuck is going on in this movie? So the assassin guy that the senator sends is trying to follow them to get this fucking tape off of Alex. And he goes and jumps a bunch of fences and then jumps directly into a Rottweiler's open mouth. <laughs> jumps directly into a Rottweiler's mouth and fucking dies. Just dies. There's nothing else that happens. Hurry up, Peg! Coming! For some reason, then, we go with Jeremy to drop off the fake finger to his boss. I don't even know why this is in the movie. Is that, uh, is that a tiger's eye? I don't know too much about rocks. Well, that's not a crime, is it? Spoiler alert, the guy knew that it wasn't the right finger, knew he was lying the whole time, knew the guy never got killed, knew it was bullshit. Are you sure this is Vince's finger? I think so. Oh, it's bad enough not to get the job done, but then to lie about it? Where's my money? So what the fuck is it even in the movie for? Why is that even in there? It doesn't, it's, it's so maddening. 
<laughs> so maddening, dude. So then the senator finds Alex, asks for the tape. She doesn't have it. She's like, oh, Jeremy has it. Where is that tape? I don't have it. If Kaiser doesn't kill him, I will. Now you give it up. Jeremy has it. It's in his backpack. So then they go to the boss's joint, and then the senator has like a showdown with the fucking Jeremy's boss for some reason. Bring him out. Come on back when you're ready for another job. Don't get too attached. A little cash flow problem. I just can't afford this right now. Not so fast, Alex. <laughs> Ain't that a bit. I can tell you whoever wrote this thought they were super clever uh, when they wrote this. They were not. This is so stupid. Shit goes down, Alex gets out or something, I don't know, who cares? And then the bosses draw weapons on each other, they're gonna duke it out. And then we find out Peg's getting her story. What made you change your mind? Didn't want to go to jail. <sighs> Is that it? Yep. It's got Briggs' fingerprints all over it. You sure this will work? Oh yeah, absolutely. They're expecting it. They get out scot-free. No, nothing happens. I don't think anything happens to anybody. Cops aren't looking for them anymore or something. Like, just never, nothing materializes of that. Like, they were going through a multi-state chase. Like, the FBI would have been on at this point, and nothing fucking happens because of it. Nick, help me! Help! Then the movie just ends. Just ends. That's it. Well, that was Trust Me. This movie sucks. It's one of the craziest, I mean, I don't know. If you're really into terrible shit, you're gonna really have to want to torture yourself to watch this movie. Um, in some ways, it was enjoyable because it's so wild and insane. I mean, I don't know. This is the craziest piece of shit I've ever forced myself to sit through. I couldn't take my eyes off the screen despite how terrible it is. I, um, uh, man, unless you really want early onset dementia, I would say please don't watch this movie. If you can even find a copy, I don't know if you're ever going to be able to find it. It's pretty rare. And that was Trust Me. So, again, trust me, don't watch this shit. But thank you for, for sticking with me here. Thank you for watching Video Hell Show. I'm going to have some more uh, crazy stuff coming up soon. Some more uh, digital hell shorts. Some more full episodes. Hopefully my buddies will come back and do some episodes with me too. Uh, I'm going to keep pumping out some, uh, some content for you and keep, uh, keep coming by. Uh, if you like it, like and subscribe. Have a good one. Damn, don't I get a box or something? Percy, I knew you'd mess this up. <laughs>